Welcome back to Let's Play Valkyria Chronicles 4. My name is Karsten. So let's see what's going on in the Crystal Sea. And I'm guessing we can't access headquarters because we're going to get a new headquarters. I guess probably on one of those ships. Let's see what happens. Only the coldest winters gave rise to the Crystal Sea, a floating field dotted with countless icebergs. Normally an inland sea, the bitter cold made it a frozen wasteland, impassable by ships. At these times, nature itself protected the imperial capital, snow on the land and icebergs in the water. However, this winter brought an unusual sight. Three Federation battleships charging through that frigid expanse. Snow cruisers. These were the Federation's secret weapons, built to pass the impassable and tame the Crystal Sea. The snow cruisers hadn't shown up when they did, the entire Ranger Corps would have died on that coast. As it stood, we'd already lost over half our troops by the time they arrived. After boarding, we reorganized the survivors. Each company went to a different ship. Squad E's company was assigned to the Operation's number two vessel, the Centurion. We're finally in a place where we can leave the cold, the hunger, and the marching behind. It's almost too good to be true. Straight out of hell, and into something like heaven. But, it's not a heaven that comes with a sky. Minerva holding up. She won't touch her food. It seemed to take all her effort just to respond to me. I see. Well, I can't blame her. She's one of the few survivors of Squad F. And they... They might not have died if... If Squad E had been quicker. But if Minerva stays like this... Yeah. Time heals all wounds, but we don't have that luxury. Ah! Damn it, there goes my soup! Are you okay? That was a big one. Oh, I've had enough of this crap. I can't keep my appetite with all this damn shaking. And the boat creaks, I can't even sleep. <laughs> oh, princess. Can't get his beauty rest going over a little ice reef. You army boys are all the same. Oh, yeah? Well, we ain't a bunch of chumps on a boat, that's for sure. <laughs> and whose boat do you think you're on? Oh, we can help you get some sleep hot shot. No more scary ice. You might not even wake up. Oh, you think you're hot shit? Fine, come get it! <laughs> Coming in with a big wind-up like that? I'll show you how to throw a friggin' punch! Shouldn't we stop them? They can let off some steam. Idiots of the land versus idiots of the sea. Hey, Kai, isn't this getting a little out of hand? Uh, that's the thing about idiots. 
They never learn unless you make them learn. The hell? Hey, Riley! You can't just grenade us! Holy! Retreat! Retreat! Whoa! Riley, was that a live... Custom grenade, full of chili powder, pepper, and powdered mustard. Let's go, Kai. We can have some tea on the deck, where it's quieter. Probably the only one who can stop this. A pepper spray bomb there. Well, looks like we meet the captain. Welcome to the Centurion. I'm the captain, Roland Morgan. This is Marie, the radio officer, and Luf, the radar operator. We help coordinate maneuvers between the ship and ground forces. It's nice to meet you, Claude. Luf, aren't you going to give Claude a proper greeting? What, waste my breath on that, moron? I've got better things to do. <sighs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Luf's always like that. She's the best at what she does, though, so don't worry about her ability. I... I see. <laughs> These young ground pounders are always so high-strung. And you are? Brian Haddock, Lieutenant Junior Grade. I'm the navigator. Lieutenant Haddock, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Just Brian is fine. You do outrank me, after all. Huh? No, I'm a lieutenant, too. Not anymore, Claude. From this day forward, you're promoted to the rank of captain. Uh. I'd like to put you in command of this ship's guard convoy. Commanding the guard convoy? But Minerva Victor should have seniority over me. We've already offered the post to Lieutenant Victor. She refused outright and recommended you in her place. She did? I'd been considering you for the position myself, after reviewing your record. With your judgment, adaptability, and the trust of your soldiers, you make a fine candidate. Will you accept this duty, Captain Wallace? Yes, sir! Oh, marvelous! Well, without any further ado, I'd like to explain your first mission as captain. Our three snow cruisers are currently heading north, across the Crystal Sea. Our new aim is a raid on Schwarzgrad, the Imperial capital. The operation's known by the codename Cygnus. It was a contingency plan for Operation Northern Cross, devised in secret, you understand. But with Operation Northern Cross set back so far, Command is using it as a grand diversion instead. And so, we of the Cygnus fleet have inherited the duty of invading the capital. The Crystal Sea is a natural barrier. The Empire would never expect an attack from this side. Even if they did, the ice can't support ships, much less infantry and tanks. They can't intercept or pursue. This new weapon, the Snow Cruiser, is going to let us ride right into the seat of the Empire. That is our duty. Attacking the capital from the Crystal Sea? I don't think anyone would see that coming. You command an entire guard convoy now, Mr. Wallace. I'll be expecting great things. I'll give it all I have, sir. <laughs> Good to hear. And let's get to work. Oh, 
We'll continue. Your first duty as captain is to appoint a leader. What do you mean? With your promotion, you'll be carrying quite a bit more responsibility than you've had so far. You will also have more members in Squad E now. You'll need to open your mind to new strategies. You're already delegating a bit to Lieutenant Miller and Sergeant Raz, but I'd like you to appoint a new squad mate to leadership to help bring Squad E to its full potential. Huh. I'm sure this will be a boon to you in the battles to come. Thank you, sir. Uh, give it some thought. I'm confident your choice will be the right one. Someone who's fit to be a leader. Who should I choose? You can now assign leaders from the command room. Choose a soldier from the list and press X to assign them as the current leader. Leaders increase CP in combat, can give direct commands, and cannot be killed. Only soldiers ranked corporal and above can be assigned as leaders. Soldiers earn promotions through combat experience. The more units deployed, the sooner they can become a leader. Oh, so this is how I can get a scout as a leader and drag people on huge all the way across the map that's kind of cool Minerva I accepted the position be commanding the guard convoy. But why did you recommend me? Was the title not enough? Now you want to hear me admit defeat in my own words? No. It's just... I, I know you still haven't forgiven me. And I never will. You killed Crystal. And you destroyed Squad F. I'll never forgive you. And I won't let you forget. Nevertheless... Crystal fought with her head held high until the very end. She died fighting for what she believed in. Even when it all looked hopeless, she did everything she could to protect me. So I will avenge her death. I'll defeat the Empire and fulfill her wish. Then why didn't you accept the... Because you are the better candidate, damn you! Squad F is gone. The only able member left from Squad D is their commander. After the reorganization, Squad E is the only one with any real firepower left. It's elementary. The only one who's fit to be commander is the one with the squad left to command. Minerva. Claude. I am prepared to do whatever it takes. I'll cast everything aside. If it means I can avenge them. If it means we can win. Staying locked in a petty contest of pride is only going to hold us back. Command me as you see fit, Claude. Bring us the victory you promised our allies. Our friends died fighting the Empire. Now it's our duty to avenge them. Yeah. I know. I'll be watching you, Claude. I will judge your determination and your strength of will. If you ever disgrace the memory of the soldiers who died to get you here, then I will personally send you to answer to them. <sighs> Listen up, everyone. I'd like to introduce a new member of Squad E. Minerva Victor reporting. My comrades paid the ultimate price, and I will carry on their legacy. 
My name is Ronald Ulvey, and I fight with the pride of Squad F in my heart. So I guess that we have another tank now? So the glory is kind of like the shamrock then. More piercing cannons, anti-personnel Gatling guns, and wide-range flamethrowers. Yeah, it's basically the shamrock. You know, it's sad and all that, uh, you know, we had a named character die, and the nervous voice actor is, I think he's doing a great job, but relatively speaking, it doesn't have as much impact as what happened in the first game, because we've only seen her in, like, what, four or five scenes? Crystal. So it doesn't have as much impact for the player. I have an important announcement to make. As part of the reorganization of the Ranger Corps. Squad F will be merged into Squad E. Your attention, please. As you know, Squad F was dealt a crushing blow in the last battle. The Empire's attack was too much for us. We lost... almost everyone. <clears throat> but the spirit of Squad F still burns bright in our hearts. We will rise again, fight for our fallen brethren, and overcome the Imperial Army! Minerva, Squad E is here to help you carry those burdens. Crystal's sacrifice, and everyone else's. We vow to them and to you that we will see this through. Just so. We are bound by a single objective. Defeat the Empire, and end the war. Henceforth, Squad F is under Captain Wallace's command. We shall push forward, together with Squad E. Let us fight as one! In addition to two new squad mates, we're also adding their tank to our numbers. Miles, Dan, this is Squad F's driver. Lieutenant Ronald Alby. It's nice to meet you. Don't worry about formalities with me. We can just take it easy. <clears throat> with these new additions, our duties will be more demanding than ever. It's only gonna get tougher from here on out. We'll have to work together and fight as a team. I'm counting on all of you. Crystal, I will avenge you. Well, we've got a whole page of story, it looks like. I mean, I guess technically there's enough room that might be a little battle, but probably not. Meanwhile, yeah. Seriously, they're still going at it. Could always throw them out onto the Crystal Sea and let them have a snowball fight. That's actually not a bad idea, but they must have an awful lot of pent-up energy. A snowball fight wouldn't be nearly enough. Minerva and Claude. Minerva, are you, um, okay? I wasn't wounded. I'm ready to move out any time. That's enough! <clears throat> the Federation's staking it all on a new plan. Operation Cygnus. And we need to make sure it succeeds. We don't have time to be fighting over petty differences. Operation Cygnus? the hell is that? <laughs> Wait, you guys came aboard without even knowing that? Raz, everyone, listen to me. This ship is heading north across the Crystal Sea, towards the Imperial capital. 
This op is our new focus as part of the Ranger Corps. Wait, Claude, is this ship really going to the capital? Yeah. So we can roll on over the imps just by riding this thing? That's almost too easy. You squids and the crew better make sure I get there. I'm gonna be a hero, you know. You? The kid complaining he can't get his nap time? You're not even gonna last to the capital. What'd you say? Raz, cut it out! I think we might need some joint training between the Army and the Navy. For the sake of teamwork. Okay, so I guess we can go back to headquarters. Do that in a little bit. We've got at least a little bit more uh, story here. Hmm? I'm sorry it took so long, but it's time to hand out your cold weather equipment. Winter gear. You mean we won't have to warm our hands on the tank's exhaust pipe? Or wear a week's worth of socks at once? You had to go that far? I heard you had a rough time, but I didn't realize it was that bad. Well, now you'll have a thick coat, leather gloves, wool innerwear, and sheepskin boots. Don't worry. <laughs> no more shivering out in the cold. Oh, hell yeah! Okay, let's all get changed. Riley and Kaisha are taking a while. Man, why do women always take so long to get dressed? It's not like how they wear it's gonna make a difference. Oh, really? You think you've seen it all, huh? Riley Miller Winter Edition. Uh, damn. Hey, what kind of reaction is that? Tell me what you think. Oh, I, I like it. It looks great on you. <laughs> I know, right? I customized it a bit so the hem would look cuter. That's why it took so long, huh? Actually, that one's on me. Mm. Wow, yours looks really nice, too. Wait a sec. Your cloak's the only thing different. Are you gonna be okay? That looks kind of cold. Didn't fit me. Oh, that's right. Since you're registered as a man. I'm sure we could get Marie to find you a woman's uniform. No, I'll deal with it. Thicker clothes would only slow me down anyway. It's actually pretty warm if I just wrap up like this. Uh... <laughs> what do you think, Raz? <laughs> Whatever. Don't blame me if you catch a cold. Well, if you're invincible, you obviously don't need yours. I'll just take them off you. I... Well, I... Look, just be careful, all right? Okay, so that's the new... Or that's the next mission. Did I get a squad story unlock? Guess not. All right, let's go to headquarters. Yep, we are at different headquarter graphics. All right, let's check the mess hall. Didn't anyone teach you table manners? Forks and knives are not musical instruments. Quit making a racket at mealtime. Hey, you, eat your vegetables. No picky eaters in this crew. And drink responsibly. A hungover soldier is a dead soldier. Oh, this ship's galley is truly a godsend. A place for everyone to enjoy a relaxing meal and unwind between missions. Uh, uh. 
Hmm? What's eating you, Sergeant? I told you to chew before you swallow. <laughs> Ugh, as if. All your bitching is killing my appetite. What? Bitching? I'm just giving some friendly advice on proper dining etiquette. Uh, don't mind him, Minerva. Raz actually got food poisoning. He, his meds haven't kicked in, so he's all cattywampus. Food poisoning, hmm? That won't do. A soldier is only as good as their health. Eureka! I have just the recipe for that. The hell is that? Looks like swamp water. A cure-all concoction passed down through the Victor family. Guaranteed to restore one's vim and vigor. Go on. Drink up. Oh, uh, still like herbal tea? I uh, guess it can't hurt. Bottoms up! <laughs> Whoa, Raz, what's wrong? Snap out of it! <sighs> hell. I saw a vision of hell. Kicks in quick, doesn't it? I'll kick you in quick! That was the most nasty ass outhouse slop I ever. Whoa, wait. What the hell? Where'd my stomachache go? <laughs> I told you so. That is 500 years of Victorian wisdom. Minerva, that's amazing. I bet we could use it on the field. Hmm. Perhaps it could cure other poisons, too. Very well. Let's add it to the old playbook. Hmm. Added out 12,000 XP. That's most of what I got, but... I got everyone to elite, so... That was the most pressing matter, I think. Seeing a Victor family tradition alive on the battlefield. Words cannot convey the pride I feel. I don't think we have enough XP to do anything here. Good day, Captain Wallace. While you're aboard our ship, I'll be handling your training regimen. Training will, of course, follow Navy regs, but you shouldn't notice much difference. Now, show me what you've learned. Oh, and don't worry. There are plenty of locations on the ship suitable for training. Up on deck, in the corridors. Honing your soldiers' abilities will be the key to victory. I expect success from your squad, Captain. <laughs> so, who will it be today? Well, nothing right now. Done for the day? Come back whenever you're ready for more. Alright, let's check R&D. Whoa! They even have these kinds of facilities on ships? We should be able to upgrade our tank parts and squad mates' equipment here, same as back on the base. Whenever you want to research new weapons, you know where I'll be. All right, let's see what we can do here. What? And once again, we'll probably be using the galleon. in nearly every case accuracy is better than anything else. Wow. Well that's D twenty four and twenty. What? D twenty six and twenty. So probably the Robinson M M96 is going to be the best machine gun. Yeah, 
And again, we'll be using the SB9. Damage doesn't matter if we can't hit. That's not even that much more. is really going to be our best bet still. We'll need to go over those in a minute, but... Flamethrower split off at some point. No. New grenades. We do have better uniforms. Definitely want to get these. Oh. I'm starting to use up all my funds. Still have plenty left. These are generally more important than tank upgrades anyway, in most cases. An extra range. I'll take that. More AP. Take that. I'm actually running low on money, so we might have to wait. Wait, heavy tank body? So, I gotta... It's a heavy tank now. Okay. Smoke, smoke rounds? Ooh, yeah. That's that's gonna be good. We're running out of money. We're, like, out of money. Oh, and we got more room now. Okay. for the moment. I can get another ammo capacity. Let's actually see what we can do with these. Afford that. How about the cactus? That may be good. That would take all our money, though. All right, I think we'll do this. We can have engineers refill the uh, tank ammo if need be. Having just one extra is good enough in most cases. 
Having this gun be better is going to be good. All done, Claude. And now we're basically out of money. If we got to issue equipment. Everyone's going to be using that. Oh, you're a scout. I thought you would be a stock trooper from the uh, that armor on your shoulder. All right, let's see if we can get that. It gets you better aim. How does this compare? Randy twenty four E plus. So we have one that's slightly better. I may give that to Curtis just to remind myself to use him so I can get his squad starting. Or Odin. I've been using Odin, trying to get him up. remind myself to use him so I can get his set of squad stories. Now you guys sometimes suck too anyway. You guys could all be using that except one person using the uh, long car. All right. Okay. We will give you this so we have someone with the anti-personnel mortar in case we end up needing it. You guys should be using galleons. the GSR is the uh, wasp is better wait now this is B1200 110. Seventy-eight versus one ten. I think it. I think it's actually going to be worth everyone using that. Now down here. Let's 
check the command room here. Okay, let's see. The fresh recruits could give our squad a new edge. Might be good to get them on the field. Okay, so she is permanently there. Got five, six scouts, five shock troopers, four lancers, three engineers, three snipers, three grenadiers. take out though probably probably do have an excess of scouts right now but you on standby right. bring him in. projections now a sign leader Probably good to have another scout as a leader, actually. Probably Godwin, because he did he just tends to do so good. Sure. Stick the darks in with all the work. <laughs> I'll do it. It's what he would have done. You trust me that much? Sure. Stick the darks in with all the work. I'll be I'll deploy him for the command point, but I'll probably be mostly using others to get the uh, to get them promoted as well. There, all set for the next battle. Just take a quick look in here. We can we can actually change all our different outfits there. it hasn't updated her bio for hers His face looks kind of familiar. He kind of reminds me, I don't remember the name, but he kind of reminds me of one of the characters from the first game.
Right. I think we're probably going to wait till next time to do that battle. But let's go ahead and catch up on the news because we haven't done that in a while. On the 8th, the Federation military officially confirmed rumors of supply lines to the front being significantly delayed. The southwest region of the Empire has been known for mountainous terrain and poor weather conditions, both of which hinder Federation movement. However, the military is confident these delays will not affect the operation. If the weather grows worse, snowfall would be a serious obstacle on the way to the capital. The pace of infantry and supplies alike would be drastically reduced. Meteorological history suggests that Federation still has two months before snowfall, thankfully, but they will need constant vigilance and careful resupplying as they advance. Breaking news, snowfall confirmed over the Federation-occupied Lindbergh base, but Times correspondent reported dated the 2nd. If accurate, this would indicate snowfall over a month earlier than previous years, the worst possible scenario for the Federation troops on the march. Federation's rallying cry, before winter comes, was chosen for good reason. Snow will drastically snow slow both their advance and their supply lines. Moreover, the Empire's forces are used to wintry conditions and more readily equipped with cold winter or cold weather gear. With all implications considered, Federation forces may face a greater threat than ever. All we can hope is that the sudden snowfall is just a freak occurrence rather than a sign of things to come. Still, forecasts from multiple nations paint a grim picture, including lower temperatures than normal across the board for this time of year. As the Federation forces continue their advance, we will be watching the skies. On the 8th, the Empire's military press secretary announced their intent to sweep out all Federation forces occupying Imperial territory. The Federation has yet to comment. However, several reliable sources have reported that Allied forces have begun to mobilize in the western regions of the Empire. If the Empire follows through on this threat, it can only mean dire circumstances for the Federation. A defeat here would force them to retreat from their held position, which in turn would be a near-fatal blow to the operation, or even the war itself. Federation forces are already struggling with maintaining their supply lines and securing a route for the advance, stuck in the bitter cold of this early winter. One question is on everyone's minds. Can the Federation repel the incoming Imperial attack? On the 19th, the Empire's press secretary officially announced their success in routing a large portion of the occupying Federation forces. When pressed for a response, Federation officials confirmed that a portion of their forces have been withdrawn for the sake of tactical repositioning. Contrary to this, we've received reports that the Federation has abandoned Lindbergh Base. I went as accounts report wounded soldiers with grim expressions heading westward. Currently, information channels are rife with contradictory reports and misinformation, but it seems clear that the Federation's forces are in grave danger. If the Federation falls here, there would be nothing left to stop the Empire from taking control of all Europa. Their despotic rule and archaic values would overrule all life as we know uh, as we know it now. If we want to prevent this dark future, each Federation citizen must act. Times recommends you reminds you of your patriotic duty. Do your part to win the war. Amid rumors of retreat, the Federation announced on the eighth that the operation is now transitioned into a new phase. However, the announcement mentioned no details, nor did it acknowledge withdrawing their troops. On the same day, the Empire publicly announced their success in driving back the Federation forces. A special correspondent has provided an unconfirmed report that a single Federation squad has taken an Imperial supply base. If true, this could be a significant clue as to the war's future, in part because the supply base is far from the Federation's original westward route. This indicates that it was unconnected to the original operation. On another note, we were received information that the aforementioned squad has disappeared entirely after their assault on the base. We have yet to confirm this news, and with both the Federation and the Empire trying to control the flow of information through the general public, it may be difficult to find the truth. We at the Times are aware of our sole duty to provide the truth. We promise our readers that we will continue to do our part and provide accurate and reliable information to all. New there. Well, I think we will actually be taking a break here.
We'll be looking at this mission next time. I hope you have been enjoying. If you have, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.